about the grace of God uh, that grants us all such refreshing opportunities to once again be in fellowship with him. If you would bow your heads. Father, 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 as you have in times past, please, Lord, do it again. Word my mouth and give me only those things that would edify these so great, so great of people. I'll be careful not to take any of your glory, but all of the honor, all of the praise. Lord, we'll give it to thee in thy dear son Jesus' name. And all of God's people shouted amen, amen. and amen. If you don't mind, just before you take your seat, Will you tell somebody next to you, you're in the right place? Come on, say it like you mean it. You're in the right place at the right time. If you believe it, give the Lord a praise clap as you take your seat. I want to honor, I want to honor Bishop Blake. I want to thank him for this privilege. And to all of the general board members, some of which are my covenant brothers. I want to thank God for chairman of the board of bishops, the chairman of the board, the general assembly, and the chairman of the pastors and elders council. I want to thank him for our sainted mother, Mother Willie Mae Rivers. Thank you for your such kind words you spoke to me today. Uh, to uh, Lady Blake, a woman of nobility and winsome charm. As I entered the pulpit, I wondered how can what I have prepared possibly feed so many. And then I began to pray, Lord, take that that I have and meet the needs of the multitude. In other words, open thy word to our hearts and open our hearts to thy word. I would that you would join me briefly in the following text. The book of Philippians, the book of Philippians, it is the third chapter, which is the thematic text for this week's convocation. I would like to extract from this particular chapter the third verse, the third chapter rather, and the 13th, the 12th and the 13th verse. If you have your Bibles and you're able to read aloud, I would that you would read this verse aloud for the benefit of those who may not have their Bibles present. Those of you that have it, shout amen. amen. I want to thank God for my son, my son, who also is a preacher, Elder Derek Hutchins II, for my grands, little sister Jordan, and my grandson, uh, Derek Wayne Hutchins III. May those generations of my posterity one day judge me faithful. My brothers and sisters, if you would, join me in the text 
My fellow rabbinical brothers of the first order of preaching magnitude, I solicit your prayers. All I can say, if you don't, may you reap everything you sow. If anybody ought to get with a preacher, it ought to be another preacher. Shall we commence our reading of the third chapter of the book of Philippians at the 12th verse? If you would, read aloud with me. Now, not as though I had, not as though I had already, already attained, either were already perfect. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. But I, I follow after. If that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Jesus Christ. Brethren, won't you read aloud with me? Brethren, I, I count not myself. I don't, I don't feel like I've already apprehended. But this, this one thing, this one thing I do. Paul said, this one thing I do, I forgetting, I'm forgetting those things which are behind, and I'm reaching forth unto those things which are before. If you would look at somebody and repeat the subject with me tonight. Why don't everybody just turn to somebody better looking than you are and repeat these words with me. Well, I notice some of you act like you can't find nobody better looking. Well, if you can't find anybody better looking, then just find someone looking. Paul said, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. I'm forgetting those things which are behind, and I'm reaching forth unto those things which are before. Will you just look at somebody and in your most vociferous voice, won't you speak it aloud to your neighbor, our subject extracted from the text? Will you say to somebody more beyond. Look at them and say it again, more beyond. On the old Spanish coin, on the old Spanish coin, there is a banner between with the surrounding motto. You see, on this old Spanish coin, there's this banner between two pillars of Hercules with the surrounding motto. Here's what the motto says. The motto says, ne plua ultra. It's Spanish. Why don't you try it with me, if you will? Ne plua ultra. Once again, ne plua ultra. It means no more beyond. These coins were issued when Spain was great, in the day when Spain was possibly one of the greatest world powers possessing both shores of the Mediterranean. Imagining, Spain imagining that she had possessed all, she stamped her coins in that day with the inscription upon the banner between these two pillars of Hercules with this motto, nay, poor, ultra, no more beyond. Can you see it? 
take your mind on a mental flight and recapitulate with me back over history. And imagine with me, if you will, this banner between these two pillars. Can you see it engraved upon the backdrop between these two pillars? Nay, plur ultra, no more beyond. But later, Christopher Columbus, born with a passion for discovery, found that which lay beyond the pillars of Hercules and Spain. Spain chose to leave the pillars of Hercules upon the coin, but changed the motto on the coins of later date. The later date coins were changed from ne plur ultra, no more beyond, to read plur ultra, more beyond. This is a parable of what we are perpetually doing in our lives, looking forward to some limit, some so-called ending. It's like Spain placing a banner between two pillars of Hercules within our mind. Engraved is an image, nay, plur ultra, no more beyond. I ask you, my brothers and sisters, have you ever been there? Have you ever been there where you felt that is this all there is? Is there nothing more than this? By faith, I challenge you to look again. Breaking beyond the other side, vistas of things unknown, the undiscovered, there is more. I say to you, cancel the limitations and look out to the pillars. There is more, there is more beyond. Will you look at somebody and say, there's more for me? Shake your head like you do when you mean what you say and tell your neighbor, the devil is a lie. There is more for me. How many of you believe you haven't seen your best days? How many of you believe that you haven't driven your best car? How many of you believe you haven't lived in your best house? You have not sung your best song. You have not preached your best message. I declare unto you, there is more. We're all tempted to draw premature conclusions to our lives and even our careers. We all look between the pillars and see, we see our hopes unfulfilled. Sometimes we see our dreams shattered even unattained goals and unachieved ambitions. And we imagine that there is nothing more beyond. Like a student, we work and toil towards graduation day and feel that if I can just get to graduation, it'll all be over. Only to discover that that day is called commencement. It's not the ending, but it's a new beginning. There's more, it's not over, there is more. I wanna speak this to somebody who's discouraged. I wanna speak this to somebody who feels like you have just missed your boat. Somebody here who feels like all hope is gone. Somebody who's made a few mistakes. Somebody who's had a few failures. Somebody here who the devil is trying to convince to give up and throw in the towel. I declare unto you, grab hold to your towel and wait upon your God. For there is more. There is more. Change your theme from nay plur ultra. No more beyond to plur ultra. More beyond. In order to achieve ultimate realization, nothing is more important than definite conception. What do you mean, Brother Hutchins? You've got to have a clear scheme and a clear concept. If we have no goals or no meaning of things, 
In other words, no conception, we will aim too low and fall too short. The immediate, oh my brothers and sisters, it's so easy to be caught up in the immediate. The immediate is like a seed which may seem to be devoid of form and beauty. Yet in every seed lies the potentiality of the unexpressed. What appears to be out only as a seed potentially lies the making of something great. I want you just to look at somebody beside you and say, even though you can't see it, God is at work behind the scene of your life working out a blessing for you. Don't you let the devil make you think that God is not going to do it. Don't you let these player haters in the church make you feel like God can't use you. Don't you let anybody minimize what God has in store for you. God does not consider your past in order to determine your future. If you will say yes to God, there is still more. I wish somebody would just touch three people in your area and shout more, more, more. Paul, Paul was an interpreter of life. Paul was an exponent of true philosophy. He lived in the day of the Roman Greco era. Plato, Socrates, Euripides, and Aristophanes. But no man of the past or present was greater in his intellectual supremacy. He was unparalleled in his day and even to this day. Come with me as I make some attempt. Won't you come with me as I make some attempt at exegetical exactitude as I matriculate through this homiletical outline? Come with me. Won't you come with me? If you're coming, shout, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming with you. My brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that the third chapter of Philippians, this epistle contains the most interesting declaration. In this chapter, we see him looking back and looking forward, then telling us the condition of his conviction. We see Paul here telling us how he honestly felt. His back is turned to the past and yet his face is towards the future. He declares in the text that I am a Hebrew of Hebrews as teaching, as, as teaching the righteousness which is in the law or touching the righteousness which is in the law. He says, I'm found blameless. I have, uh, I have my brothers and sisters a profound admiration for Paul. The caliber of his mind the makeup of his personality and the passion of his persuasion. Paul was somebody. In verse 12 of that same third chapter, he says, not as though I had already attained. Either were already perfect, but I follow after. In other words, I believe there is more beyond. If that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended. When you study the word apprehend and you think about apprehending, you think of a policeman apprehending a criminal, taking hold of him, capturing him. Paul says, I have been apprehended. I have been arrested. I've been arrested by God. We've got too many people running around in the church that need to be arrested. I don't hear nobody talking to me. We've got, to, we've got the sissy, the yippie, and the freebie gypsy. We've got those who talk upstairs while they live in the basement. A million dollar dance and a two cent life. Look at your neighbor and ask them, I don't, I don't see you saying nothing. I don't hear you, I don't hear you. Look at him in the face, tell him, you bad, shout on that, shout on that. 
in the 12th verse, he says that I may lay hold that 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 has laid hold of me. God arrested Paul on the Damascus road and he wanted to do the same for God. He wanted to lay hold on God. Is there anybody here that would admit you need more of God? I'm saved, but I need more of God. I'm baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, but I need more of God. I don't care how much you think you got. You can come a second motorcycle, come a second motorcycle, but when you get to come a second motorcycle, you still need, you need some more. Touch your neighbor next to you and say, you need some more. In that fourth verse of that same third chapter, the things that were gained to me, I counted loss for Christ, for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. What things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. In other words, everything that I have accomplished, I consider it secondary to gaining Christ. I see people in our church and uh, throughout the world seemingly in pursuit of material things. They want to be famous. They want to possess all of the bling bling. I don't hear nobody talking to me. And there's nothing wrong with having nice things. But you must understand that clothes don't make people, people make clothes. Don't ever let your clothes determine your shout. Don't ever let what you got on determine how you're going to lift him up. Everything I have, the Lord has provided. Will you touch somebody and tell them, neighbor, if there's anybody here that ought to be praising God, tell them it ought to be me. If you know God has made a way for you, if you know God has opened a door for you, why don't you open your mouth? Why don't you lift your voice? Why don't you clap your hands? Why don't you give that God some praise? Too many times we sit up in church like we pulled ourselves up by our own bootstraps. But if you tell the truth, it wasn't just but a few days ago when you didn't have boot nor strap. You know it was just a few days ago when you were shopping in a Goodwill store with your sister's dress on trying to find a bargain. Now you sit up here buying clothes you cannot afford, trying to impress people you don't even like. I don't have nobody talking to me. Come on, sisters, you know what I'm talking about. We spend money we really need for other things. We rob St. Peter and St. Paul just so we can wear St. John. But the things that were gained to me, I counted loss that I might gain Christ. That I might be, the ninth verse says, that I might be found in him. That I might be found in him. Nothing wrong with being on TV, but I want to be found in him. I was on a television program. I had my own TV program for 16 years on ABC. But I want to be found in him. I don't want to just be found in the pulpit. I want to be found in him. I don't want to just be found in a position. I want to be found in him. I don't want to just be found in some elite, elevated, popular place. I want to be found in him. Not of my own righteousness, for that would be of the law. But I want to be found in him. That is through faith of Christ. As I embark upon the closing of my message, he declares in the text, he declares in the text, this one thing, this one thing. I wish I could get somebody to just say this one thing. This one thing I do. I am forgetting those things that are behind me and I am reaching forth to more 
beyond. Had the things behind me forgetting, the things before me reaching. Consider with me in the close two things within the one thing. One, the impelling or the impelling motive. Can I get you to say the impelling motive? And finally, I will conclude with the resulting attitude. What was his compelling motive, his goal? What was he trying to pursue? The impelling motive is clear. The vision he has seen through the pillars. What are you seeing, Paul? That which has made him cancel all previous limitations. What are you seeing, Paul? Paul said he devoted himself to the one thing, the one passion of his soul. What was it? In the Latin, it's called the supernal vocadia. The supernal vocadia or decadia. The supernal vocation, the high calling, the upper calling. Man, if I don't achieve anything else, I want to achieve the high calling. I want to get to the high calling. Before this realization, Paul boasted in his flesh. He would have told you if you'd ask him. Paul would have told you by birth, I am a Benjaminite. By racial identity, I am a Jew. By trade, I am a tent maker. And by training, I am a Pharisee. By adoption, I'm a child of God. And by assignment, I'm an ambassador for the king. Concerning foreign languages, I mastered in 13 and minored in 7. Concerning my education, I matriculated from the San Houston courthouse and sat at the foot of Gamelia and told him, if you be my teacher, I'll be your student. My, 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 my. I'm about to enjoy my own cooking here. Will you just look at somebody and give them a my, 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 my. Now, he says, I count it all. I count it all dung. I count it all worthless. And I'm gonna tell you something, if you don't gain Christ, I don't care what kind of car you drive, I don't care what kind of house you live in, it's dung, it's nothing. He says, how many of us, how many of us are living in the blessings of things behind? How many of us are living in a blessing received 20 years ago. Let me tell you something, there's more. Will you tell somebody God's got more for you? You sit there and bask in the anachronisms of the past and you'll let your past predetermine your future. Man, let me tell you something. Woman, let me tell you something. If you're in God, you haven't seen anything yet. If you're in God, God's got more for you. If you're in God, don't you let anybody make you doubt it. God says he has more. Forgetting those things and pressing towards the more. Your best running in the past is nothing if you are slacking in the race now. I'm asking God, Lord, help me to run this race. Lord, help me to run this race. Do I have anybody here that's saying, Lord, help me to run this race. Lord, I realize 99 and a half won't do. I'm trying to make 100. I close with the resulting attitude. What was Paul's resulting attitude? What is the resulting attitude of Paul? He says one thing. I focus on, I forget the past because there's more. Don't allow your present realization to limit future possibilities. Look through those pillars, there is more beyond. My brothers and sisters, the one thing Paul passionately longed for, and he quotes it in the 10th verse, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. When he gets to coming in and when he gets to his clothes, he has no, com no, no confession of failure in his ministry. Paul says in that first chapter, about in the 12th verse, he says, some things have happened to me. Paul said, some things have happened to me. Do I have anybody here that would confess some things have happened to me? Is there anybody here that would tell your neighbor, I've had my share of life's ups and downs. 
Just lean over at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, I've had my share of life's ups and downs. But lay your hand on them and tell them, but through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Why don't you pat your neighbor on the shoulder and say, neighbor, hang on in there. Tell them, hold your head up. Hang on in there. God will bring you out. Shout yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to close when I tell you this. Paul admonished the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord. And he said, rejoice always. Anybody can rejoice when things are going well. Anybody can rejoice when you got surplus. Anybody can rejoice when you're on the mountain. But can you praise God when the mountain is on you? I don't know about you, but do I have anybody in the house tonight that would say, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Why don't you open your mouth and give God some praise? Yeah! I gotta get out of here. I heard him say, let your moderation be known. Let your moderation be known. We want to be flamboyant. We want to be seen. But the Lord commissioned us to be moderate. And that's what I like about our presiding bishop. I don't know what we would do if our presiding bishop would have caved in to the glamour crowd who would solicit him to be on television and to flash all of his wealth and all of his blessings. But I heard, I heard, I said I heard the Apostle Paul when he said, let your moderation be known. We need to be known as men of moderation. We need to be known as women of moderation. For God is calling for a holy church. Say yeah! Say yeah! My brothers and my sisters, I'm clothing. But he said, be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, and the peace of God, and the peace of God. Somebody is troubled, but I declare the peace of God. You will not lose your mind. You will not go into depression. You will not quit. You will not forfeit your future. Lay your hands on your neighbor and shout the peace of God. The peace of God, oh Lord, the peace of God be upon you, your hearts and your minds. Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things, oh Lord, we're living in a technological, a technological age where the internet spreads malicious gossip, where the internet blasts them, blasts people in a negative way, where they castigate you as a criminal without a hearing, where people blast your name and put you on the billboards of scandal. But one thing I found out, if God be for you, if God be for you, he's better than the whole wide world against you. Touch three people and say, hang on in there. Tell them, hang on. Hang on. Just a little while longer. Tell somebody, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Come on, tell your neighbor, hold on. Look at him in the face and testify with me. Tell them, neighbor, I've had my share 
of life's ups and downs. Tell somebody, I've been down through there, but through it all, I said through it all, through it all. I wonder, can I get you to just say through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to depend on his word. Yeah! Look at somebody and say, neighbor, it ain't over. Oh, Lord, it ain't over. Yeah! I gotta get out of here. If then, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, why don't we think on the good things? Whatsoever things that are true, whatsoever things that are honest, whatsoever things that are just, whatsoever things that are pure, whatsoever things that are lovely, whatsoever things are good report. Why don't you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, why don't you stop consulting with my enemy? about my life and ask the Lord to help me yeah 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 Ooh. I study I've heard people say to me Hutchins I've studied you and I know you well you may say you studied me but you didn't finish the class because I've got another chapter. There's more, more, more beyond. Look a little further and you'll see blessings of God in Christ. Say yeah, say yeah. My brothers and my sisters, can I tell my story? Can I tell my story? Yeah, Lord. I ain't gonna tell it unless 3,000 people in here say, tell your story. Yeah, Lord. Here is my story. I wish I had. I, I wish I had a few talk back to me, Baptist folk in here. I know this is the church of God in Christ. But if I got a witness here that don't mind admitting that you come from that old talk back to me, Baptist church, wave your hand. And shout, yes, yes. I like to go over there in that old talk back to me Baptist church where they shout at the preacher while the missionaries pull out their handkerchief and they wave it at the preacher. And this is what all of them yell. The deacons come up to the podium and they yell at the preacher. And this is what they yell. Say a word, sir. Say a word, sir. Can I get somebody in here tonight to say? Oh, Lord, I want to say a word. My brothers and my sisters, the church of God in Christ. I'm thankful for my heritage. I'm thankful for my pastor, Bishop Roger Jones. I've learned a lot from you. I've learned that failure is not final. I've learned that if God places his hand on you, if God lay his anointing on you, if God give you favor, if God Say he's on your side. Can't nobody, can't nobody, can't nobody, can't nobody block you. Can't nobody stop you. 
What three people take? Nobody, nobody, nobody. Somebody help me praise him. Clap your hands. Open your mouth. Praise him. Do I have anybody here? Do I have anybody here that they counted out? Look at your neighbor and say, they counted me out, but God counted me in. They put me down, but God picked me up. I thank God for amazing grace. Yeah! Yeah! Ah, yeah! Stay in between me. Can I tell my story? I gotta get out of here. Can I tell my story? My brothers and my sisters. Oh Lord. Ooh, ooh. When I do that in my church, my choir does it behind me. Ooh, ooh. Thank you very much. My brothers and my sisters, I was talking with one of my, one of my associate elders, the quite, the renowned Earl Carter. He's there with me. And we were talking about the church. Oh Lord. And we said the church has become like that old story where they were at, they were under the big tent. It was a circus. They were under the big tent when a trapeze artist fell from the tight rope and the masters of the circus, the circus master, yelled in the microphone and said, bring in the clowns, bring in the clowns. My brothers and sisters, there's somebody dying. There's somebody in trouble. And we're bringing in the clowns. We're bringing in imitators. We're bringing in folk with no power. These signs shall follow them. Not that are perfect, but them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. These signs shall follow them. It's not by might, nor by power, but it's by my spirit. Say it the Lord. Shout yeah. Say yeah, yeah, yeah. Will you lay your hand on your neighbor's shoulder and say, neighbor, I'm tired of the clowns. I'm tired of being entertained. I need power. I need the anointing. I need a blessing. I need healing. My health is in trouble. My life is on the line. Yeah. Yes. I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. What do you hear? Brother, Brother Curtis Daniel, I hear the chains. Come on, choir. Come on, choir. I don't care what you've been through. Forgetting those things that are behind. Touch somebody right quickly and tell them God's got more for you. God's got more. Come on, tell them in the face. Face to face. Tell them it ain't over. Tell them there's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. Some preacher. Some preacher. Some preacher that's in a moment of dilemma. I'm going to ask you not to walk. You've been kind. I'm going to ask you not to move. We're in the moment of the greatest moment of this night. When somebody grappling with failure, somebody struggling with whether or not there's going to be a better day somebody here 
wondering, will I ever get over this? I preached a sermon a couple Sundays ago till I couldn't finish it. I broke out in tears and I cried and I kept crying and I couldn't stop. The sermon was entitled, Things That You Will Never Get Over But You Will Get Past. There's some things you'll never get over, but you can get past it. Thank you, Jesus. 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 I want you to lay your hands on somebody around their shoulder and say, you may not get over it, but you will get past it because God has more for you. I hear the chain. <laughs> I hear him falling. You're going to be delivered. You're going to be set free. And you're going to be made whole. Wave your hand in the presence of the Lord if you're one of those who know what I'm talking about. I hear the chains. <laughs> hey. Will you lift it up, choir, just a little louder? I hear. Somebody began to praise him right now, right where you are. I hear. Now, Satan, we come against you. We bind you in the name of Jesus. You've hindered that woman long enough. You've hindered that man long enough. Today, they are going to experience this night a spiritual breakthrough. I want you to get up from wherever you are and come here right now. God's going to bless you. God's going to place a fresh anointing upon you. God's going to beat back the hands of Satan's power and give you complete deliverance. I don't care what it is. I tell you to get up right now. Rush here. I don't have but 60 seconds. You want this blessing. You want this deliverance. Get up now. I see that brother running. You've got to want it. If you move, God will move. If you get up, God will come down. If you walk out, God will walk in. Come here. Come here, man. Come here, woman. It ain't over until God says it's over. Get up and come on down here. The power of God loose in this place now. I hear the pain. Anointing destroys the yoke of the enemy. I hear, I hear missionary, your ministry's been held up, but I dare you to come here. Preacher, get up, come here now. Deacon, come here. Sister, get up. Come on, come on. I hear, I hear God's gonna bless you again. God's gonna move in your life again. God's going to open the door. God's going to make a way. Get up. Get up. 30 seconds. Get up and come. I hear. That's it, brother. Come on. Come on. Come on. They're coming. They're coming. Can I get you to clap your hands all over the building? Praise God for these souls. Praise God for these souls. I hear. God's going to destroy that yoke. God's going to break that habit. Come on here. God's going to heal your hurt. I know you've been hurt, but get up and come. Get up and come. Do it. Come on. Just five more seconds. There 
they're yet coming. They're yet coming. Your healing. Your healing is up here. Your healing is up here. Your deliverance is up here. Come here. Come here now. He's going to heal your body. He's going to remove your sickness. He's going to deliver your soul. 